साधु 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 थैंक यू वेरी मच वेनरेबल बिकनी एंड फॉर एवरीवन टुडे वी गॉट एक्सपीरियंस नाइस एक्सपीरियंस how to have a balanced mind <laughs> throughout the day that's a good experience for me also today <laughs> yes okay i'll start my dharma talk now may the noble triple gem bless you all Dear Dharma devotees, it is a privilege of mine to have a this session with all these meritorious devotees for, I think, for thirty minutes. <laughs> yeah, most venerable Bikuni Chanda and venerable Bikuni Upeka. must be highly commendable and thankful for inviting me to share my knowledge with these generous devotees i'm so glad i would like to start my dharma talk how to have a balanced mind throughout the day how to have a balanced mind throughout the day i strongly feel this could be really useful to both big beginners and lay people who are keen to have a balanced mind what do you mean by balanced mind what do you mean by balanced mind if one can realize the nature of his mind by overcoming all the unwholesome thoughts having detachments aware of defilements and finally developing mental serenity can be called balanced mind anyone who wishes to practice this to the utmost level he can achieve the highest level of balanced mind that is final bliss of nibbana that is final bliss of nibbana the majority of living beings prefer to have a balanced and peaceful mind that's why they practice meditation and wholesome deeds if anyone wants to develop it the ideal way to start is on the bed as you wake up in the morning the moment you open your eyes with your genuine conscious you can contemplate and observe five precepts with metta thoughts may i be well and happy may i be free from anger may i be free from suffering may all beings be well and happy may all beings free from anger 
may all beings free from suffering likewise determine yourself determine yourself i be grateful to others i be example to others i will show my courtesy to everyone without expecting anything in return good manners good behavior politeness kindness nice conduct respect for others consideration are some of my main courtesy build up your mindset towards such mental attitudes even to an unpleasant person with unwholesome deed now you have determined first thing in the morning that you show metta with good eye contact now you should not be a person who still carries past grudges now you should not be a person who still carries past grudges with your first impression early in the morning having met the thoughts will be a further motivation if others responded with similar courtesy you know as you sow you shall reap as you sow you shall reap even in our doctrine our lord buddha has mentioned how to deal with toxic people without you being a toxic person once a toxic person had met our lord buddha and wanted to have an argument he repeatedly made offensive comments but the lord buddha kept quiet then that man asked why don't you respond and show any sort of anger the buddha asked if somebody comes to your place what do you do at once he replied i ask him to sit i ask him to sit the buddha asks is that all you do no i give him to eat and drink then buddha asks what will happen if he refuses to accept any of them what will happen i don't care i keep them and i eat and drink myself your dumb friends do you know what our lord buddha's answer for that he said it is same with me it is the same with me all the thing that you told not relevant to me and i don't accept any of them you better take them back with you you better take them back with you that is how our lord buddha responded for anger so we must be 
clever enough to understand the real danger of anger and also how to practice metta in deep. In this regard, your positive and negative emotions are very significant, isn't it? You may have heard about IQ and EQ of a person. Intelligent caution and emotional caution. Or you can say emotional intelligence. All this time, IQ was given the prominence and highly rated above all the others. But now, it has been internationally proved that even if you have IQ above Albert Einstein level, if your EQ is very low, your life may be unsuccessful and may spend unhappy life. All the international researchers have proved that the people with much higher EQ, 80% of their lives were much successful and spent very happy lives even if their IQ was low. That is why even in the professional field, they give priority to this emotional intelligence than IQ now. We have experienced this immensely in our day-to-day -day life as well. If someone scolds you, you respond by arousing your anger. Your blood gets heated, face gets red, and lose your calm and pleasantness. As a result of it, you lose your sense of control and become a strong inhuman. Now, what has happened to your kindness and pity? What has happened to your kindness and pity? You are the first victim of your own anger. Remember, you are the first victim of your own anger. These are your negative emotions that you have to overcome. These are your unwholesome thoughts that you have to overcome. If you go through carefully doctrine of Lord Buddha, you can realize how much, how much value he has given for this emotional intelligence. So, you must be well aware and very specific about your emotions. How you should react when you are in angry mood, when you are in sad mood and happy mood as well. You need to have a thorough control of these three moods. Then definitely you can have a balanced and peaceful mind throughout the day.
whenever you are in angry mood, train your mind not to respond at any cost. When you are in sad mood, don't take any kind of decision. When you are in happy mood, don't give any promise to anyone. Never reply when you are in angry. Never take decisions when you are in sad. Never give promise when you are happy. Practice them seriously. In the long run, your life will be very much happy and successful. Don't you know happiness is not ready-made? Happiness is not ready-made. It comes from your own actions and reactions in life. It comes from your actions and reactions in life. You know, every action has a reaction. Every action has a reaction. So, always develop your positive emotions with the combination of your both brain and heart. Our Lord Buddha, our great teacher, Lord Buddha also preached us to develop four qualities for a balanced mind. Four sublime status. Four Brahma Viharas. Metta, which is loving kindness. Karuna, which is compassion. Mudita, which is sympathetic joy and equanimity to Pekka. You know very well how to practice Metta in our day-to-day -day life as well. You know very well. The more compassion you spread others, Obviously, you get more happiness. Obviously, you get more happiness. Let's see how to practice compassion. Haruna. Ankampa. How to practice compassion. I strongly feel this could be really useful to have a balanced mind throughout the day. That's why we should practice loving kindness, compassion, sympathetic joy, and equanimity. I'm sure you may have heard about our Lord Buddha's great compassion. It is boundless, unlimited, incomparable, and supramundane compassion. That is an extraordinary compassion only the Lord Buddhas have. Do you know the way how to practice compassion? Do you know the way 
the Lord Buddha practice great compassion to entire universe, to entire living beings. If we can see the way, the compassion that he spread to the entire living beings, we can observe there are 89 ways, very important. There are 89 ways. 89 definitions for the great compassion. What is the Lord Buddha's knowledge of the great compassion? This is clearly mentioned in Patisambhida Magapali. The path of discrimination. Bahu kehi akarehi pasantanang buddhanang bhagavantanang satte sumaha karuna okkamati. Upon the enlightened ones, the blessed ones, who see thus in many aspects they are descends the great compassion. Aditto loka sannivasote pasantanang buddhanang Bhagavantanang Satte Sumaha Karuna Kamati. Upon the enlightened ones, the blessed ones, who see thus, worldly life is burning. Worldly life is burning. They are descends the great compassion for beings. If we too can see genuinely that all living beings are burning and suffering, this compassion evolves in our mind as well. When you really see the great compassion, how that compassion excelled in Lord Buddha's mind. No doubt our minds too will gradually flourish with this compassion. Will gradually flourish with this compassion. Kena aditang in what this burns In what this burns? Living beings are burning by the flames of hatred, greed, and illusion. Living beings are burning by the flames of greed. They are burning by the flames of aversion and delusion. We must be able to see in our own minds how these beings are burning and suffering. Then only the compassion evolves in our minds. Sabdan Pahaya Gamaniyati. The world has nothing of its own. We all have to, we all have to leave everything and go. 
sabam pahaya kamalina. The world, the world has nothing of its own. One day, we all have to leave and we all have to leave everything and go. In the same manner, if we can seriously look into these viewpoints of compassion, all these viewpoints of compassion, we too can develop our attitudes towards such compassion in our own mind. That sort of attitudes towards compassion will help us immensely to have balanced mind. When we experience other strong doings, misconduct and immorality in our day-to-day -day life, we evolve our anger. It is not good at all. We will become further degenerate people. We will become further degenerate people. So, to overcome this anger, we must train our mind to look at every person in kind-hearted manner. That's very important thing. To overcome this anger, we must train our mind to look at every person in kind-hearted manner. Then only we can promote loving kindness and compassion in place of anger and hatred within us. Similarly, we try to improve sympathetic joy Similarly, we try to improve sympathetic joy and equanimity. Upeka in our day-to-day -day life. Those two points are very important. Sympathetic joy, mudita, and upeka, equanimity. So, the only way to overcome envy and jealousy that are rooted in our mind is to practice sympathetic joy. It is evident in our society that, uh, that the people with similar levels and conditions, that the people with similar levels and conditions are mostly having this strong feeling of jealousy. A beggar is having jealousy with another beggar. A young woman may have jealousy with another young woman. A, a clergy with another clergy. You can see how this jealousy having in our mind. This is very, very important thing. You have to see your mind. How it comes to your mind. Especially, you have to see this Three points, sympathetic joy, equanimity, and another thing so special, compassion. You have to practice in your day-to-day -day life. 
this you know very well this uh, unwholesome deed jealousy can easily creep into our minds if any one of minds in very sensitive manner you experience that very well you can experience that very well this unwholesome deed this jealousy can easily creep into the minds of any one of us in very sensitive manner so this can be subdued only by training our mind to word sympathetic joy therefore to spend an exemplary life therefore to spend an exemplary life we have to gradually practice not only loving kindness but also compassion sympathetic joy to the best possible level in this life you know in this present complex society equanimity is the other most important area we all must seriously think about this equanimity has been the least developed quality in our mind do you know this equanimity has been the least developed quality in our minds therefore if anyone wants to have a healthy and balanced mind he should develop his equanimity as high as possible in order to cultivate this equanimity we need to have a better awareness and understanding of karma this point is very crucial point to cultivate this equanimity we need to have a better awareness and understanding of karma its consequences and also you need to have a deep understanding of non self anatta selflessness it's a very good dharma point if someone wants to practice equanimity in our day to day life you should realize cause and effect you should realize cause and effect and you need to have a better awareness and understanding of karma and its consequences you need to have a better understanding about non self anatta selflessness then the mind will have non attachment and non hatred see how nice equanimity is serene equanimity is bliss equanimity is pleasant lord buddha krishna's etan santan etan panintan yadidam upekka equanimity is serene equanimity is bliss 
if you can develop these four brahma viharas in your day to day activities then definitely you can have a balance and peaceful mind throughout the day definitely you can have a peaceful and balanced mind throughout the day there are no doubts with all these you may finally realize that minimum requirements and maximum adjustments are the two wonderful step for your happy successful life in that case there is no question how to have a balanced mind throughout the day how to have a balanced mind throughout the day now our time is right for us to conclude the talk what we can do for next if you want to continue kivani session what are your comments what are your thoughts thank you so much venerable tarika for this dharma talk today yes. and thank okay. you thank you for your kind offering that we may have some time still for question and answers and i would like to say to everybody thank you for your patience with the technical issues today and of course we understand if you are not able to stay but if you would like to have this unique opportunity for some question and answers then we have about 15 minutes maybe 20 minutes now so does anybody have any questions if so please feel free to put your digital hand up and the first question is from susie yes um <clears throat> good morning um venerable freaker um i really i really like the point of um general compassion towards everyone um how can i develop this further like um i know how to come i know how to cultivate loving kindness meta um but i do struggle with the fact like i haven't heard of infinite compassion compassion for everyone i just um how can i cultivate it to everyone if that makes sense yes do you want to know how to spread compassion for others yes that's a nice question because you know very well how to practice metta in your day to day life likewise most important thing is compassion this this is my opinion for you if you can go through that sutta really you will understand what is the meaning of compassion the very first you have to understand what is the meaning of compassion it is profound if you can go through that sutta according to lord buddha's great compassion you can see the path of discrimination it is mentioned 89 ways 89 ways for the great compassion for the attainment of 
great compassion. It is very nice thing. I would like to show you some something is I read these three pages regarding compassion. Lord Buddha's great compassion. This is very, very, very nice, very important. End of this, you mentioned nice words regarding compassion. Lord Buddha's explanations. You mentioned upon the enlightened ones, the blessed ones, who see thus, I have crossed over and the world has not has not crossed over. See that point? The great compassion. This excelled in Lord Buddha's mind. I have crossed over and the world has not crossed over. I am liberated. And the world is not liberated. See that point? How it excelled in Lord Buddha's mind? I am liberated and the world is not liberated. I am controlled and the world is uncontrolled. I am at peace. It is excellent in Lord Buddha's mind. I am at peace and the world is not at peace. Do you feel those compassion? If you can go through in these points, I don't know, really you will feel something inside. How is the Lord Buddha's great compassion? He can't see. See that compassion? I am at peace and the world is not at peace. I am comforted and the world is comfortless. world is comfortless. See those things. This is the perfect one's knowledge of the attainment of the great compassion. The Lord would have seen many aspects. Worldly life is burning. Lord Buddha's compassion, great compassion. It is excelled in his mind. Worldly life is burning. All living beings are burning by the flames of greed. And they are burning by the flames of aversion, hatred. Living beings are burning by the delusion. Yeah, see, so many things. There is, there are. 89 ways, 89 definition for the great compassion. If you can see genuinely that all living beings are burning and suffering, then only 
compassion evolves in our minds. You have to go through these points. Then you can cultivate your compassion. That is very good one. Then you can develop your loving kindness and compassion. Then you can spread compassion for all living beings to the entire universe. You can spread May all beings free from suffering. May all beings free from suffering. May all beings free from suffering. When you are suffering by the greed, delusion or hatred, you can spread compassion to yourself, may I be free from suffering. May I be free from suffering. Likewise, you may spread your compassion to the whole beings, to the universe. May all beings are May all beings free from suffering. May all beings free from suffering. Then compassion evolves in our mind. Are you clear? Okay, thank you. Thank you for the question and for the answer. Are there yeah. any more questions? Yes. If there are any questions. Perhaps I could ask. Um, so the talk today was a talk about the Brahma Viharas, which was very inspiring to hear them from this angle. And I would like to know if there was any qualities that you believe should be developed before the Brahma Viharas or if the Brahma Viharas are the, the initial start of the practice. What? Sorry? If there are qualities that need to be um, developed before practicing yes. the Brahma Viharas. Yes, yes. That's a very important thing. How nice that question. Yeah. If you want to develop loving kindness, what, you, what should you have to do? You can see you, you have to gentle your heart. You have to soft your heart. And you can see others are happy. They are really happy. Then you, you see, oh, they are happy. How nice. They have lots of developments. May they be well and happy. May they be well and happy. You have to develop those attitudes. Especially, you have to develop kindness and you have to pay respect they expect for others and you have to develop your patience and you have to develop your uh, 
kind hearted you you have to be kind hearted person if you want to develop those qualities you have to be a kind hearted person if you want to see if you want to develop compassion i'm sure it is it is easy to practice compassion because you can see others are burning and suffering always they have enjoyments asada but it is not permanent it is impermanent asada the enjoyments only very few seconds therefore you can see others suffering they are burning from anger hatred greed attachments especially in delusion you have to see those things to practice compassion you have to see with your wisdom this is a wisdom based compassion you have to practice wisdom based loving kindness wisdom based compassion wisdom based sympathetic joy and wisdom based equanimity that is very very important thing if you can develop your wisdom if you can go through lord buddha's teachings then easily you can develop those qualities we know very well regarding sympathetic joy and rejoice others happiness how nice you can rejoice others happiness you can see others happiness especially you can see others spiritual developments you can see others well beings and you can see some people are so pretty and so beautiful and so nice they cultivated lots of wisdom then you can see their happiness may their happiness be with them may their happiness not diminish likewise if you can see others happiness really you can rejoice without unwholesome thoughts free of charge you can enjoy happiness that is very nice thing if you can practice sympathetic joy there is no question in this world there is no any problem in this world the problem is our mind lack of those qualities lack of metta lack of compassion lack of sympathetic joy lack of equanimity 
This is the biggest problem in this world. In this world, meaning in your world, not outside world. Don't see outside world. World is with you. You are in the world with this five khanda. In this fathom body. This is your world. Therefore, you have to deep understanding regarding wisdom and those things. Those things you need to practice these four Brahma Viharas. For equanimity also, you have to understand all beings are depends on on their own karma. They are depends on on their actions. They are depends on on their deeds. Karma is our inheritance. Karma is our inheritance. If you can see genuinely that way, really you can practice metta, compassion, sympathetic joy, and upeka. Those four things, most important thing in our life. You know? You need to breathe. Likewise, these four things very important for your life. Hope you can understand. Thank you so much for this answer. And thank you for being with us overall today. I'm afraid to say that we've run out of time, but it's it's great to have your teaching and your wisdom. I'll pass over to Shell for the last few minutes. Thank you, Derek. And thank you so much to Venerable Pekka for leading us in meditation earlier. And a huge, huge thank you to Venerable Derek for sharing such wisdom with us. You speak so beautifully and clearly about the teachings of the Buddha. Sadhu, sadhu, sadhu. I'm sorry for the technical problems that you had this morning, um, but thank you so much for persevering and joining us. And thank you, everyone, for your patience this morning. So we are so grateful that Venerable has given her time to help us with our two aims at Anukampa, to promote the teachings and practices of early Buddhism leading to full awakening and help to establish the first forest monastery in England where women can take full, full bhikkhuni ordination. Thank you so much, Venerable, for supporting Anu Kampa. We are full of metta for Venerable Chanda Derry, who is over halfway through her Vasa retreat in Perth. All of these teachings are offered in the spirit of dana, generosity. If you are able, we are asking for your dana and generosity towards Anu Kampa. We have seen the project flourish this year and we wish to continue the Bikuni Sangha, continue to support the Bikuni Sangha in the UK and start raising funds for to expand from our beautiful Vihara in Oxford to an even bigger abode to house more Bikunis, aspirants and lay supporters. Without the support of the community here this morning and wider community, we wouldn't be where we are today, spreading the teachings of the Buddha to all. If you can, we're asking for monetary donations to support the expansion of Anukampa. However, small or big you are able to give, every penny is so gratefully received to support the Bhikkhuni Sangha and get even closer to having a full forest monastery for Bhikkhunis in the UK. Please visit the website to donate and the link will be in the chat if I can ask Derek or Matthias to pop it in there. Uh, you can offer one-off donation or more regular monthly donations that will really support the project. There's also opportunities to offer food dana to the Vahara from November onwards, and your time uh, 
to volunteer your time at the Vihara for service from the new year. Should you wish to offer these, please email team at anucamperproject.org and that email address is in the chat too. Please also see the Anucampa website for the weekly teachings. We are being offered by the wonderful bhikkhunis and nuns and Ajahn Brahmali as well, supporting Anucampa while Venerable Chanda is on retreat, as well as Ajahn Brahm's teachings in November. Uh, there's a lot of the talks are getting quite full already, so please do book your space to make sure you can come. And also Venerable Chanda's retreats as well. Her New Year's retreat in Sheffield will be available to book later this month. Um, so next Sunday, we will be back at the normal time of 7.30 p.m. British summer time. And we will be led by Venerable Upeka on the four heavenly messengers. So thank you all so much. And in true Anu Kampa style, we will unmute so that we can all say goodbye to each other. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.